ready to go. Jump in the Millennium Falcon, go. I don't like beer. Hyperdrive. Very clear. Everclear. Let's drink some beer. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Let's electric show this to the... Well, I'll, I'll show you something. Welcome to the Rogue Squadron Podcast, friends and family. We appreciate your tunage into our event, our live event on this evening. Thanks, everyone, for being here. We love you. Episode 20. <laughs> <laughs> I've, done, I've done that a few times. 32. Okay. <clears throat> I forgive you. This is episode 32. There we go. We're getting situated. And we're glad to have everyone uh, yeah, in the zone. So if you're tuning in with us live at this moment on Twitch, we appreciate it. We love you. If you're not, catch us next week and you can watch us and yell at us while we do some shit. <laughs> and hear this beautiful music. Uh, we're going to, you guys know what it is, Rogue Squadron Podcast. RogueSquadronPodcast.com. We got t-shirts in, Rogue Squadron Podcast on top slash merch. That wasn't yeah, a web address. But yeah, there it's you close go. enough. Um, <clears throat> and then all of our social media stuff is at Rogue Squad Pod. So that's true. Um, today's episode, we are going to dive into our weekly beer review. We're excited because we got some seasonal shit coming up. So I actually just grabbed the first thing that I saw with the sun on it. I figured it was seasonal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we do have a good verses that we want to get into. Um, and there has been a recent Star Wars no There's news. There's been a decent amount of Star Wars shit this week. Yeah, so we'll we'll jump into that, including not only <coughs> Star Wars uh, Episode Seven news, but Battlefront news. I found a chip. Great <laughs> guys. Um, so yeah, a lot of shit happened though. We're pumped. We're excited. <clears throat> Before we jump into the Star Wars <clears throat> bowl, uh, guys, it's hot outside. It's fucking hot, dude. I, was, I don't I, understand. I, like I I enjoy Ohio and I do enjoy the seasons going back and forth, but I hate when. Beginning of this month, it was 40, and now it's 88. It's, it was almost 90 degrees today. My truck said it was 92. Great. Also, the AC went out in my truck this morning. Not this morning specifically, but it's out. So I was I had no air conditioning, and I, I died all day while I was driving around. Yeah. I was dead. I was a zombie driving around Ohio. <laughs> God, it was, it was terrible. You saw a four-wheel drive jumping over lemurs and... <laughs> And Fucking lemurs. I don't know. Are they inhibitable? Native to Ohio? Yeah, I think so. Na- the lemurs and the wampas is native to Ohio. The Columbus lemur you have um, never seen. Yeah, I, I got home, came back inside, and I like cranked the AC down to like 60 so I could just cool off. It was terrible. It's going to get to the point where I'm going to be taking cold showers again. Baseball, <sighs> cold showers. I do. I Because I, I don't have a pool or anything, so... To cool off, I'll get home and I'll I'll start it like warm so it doesn't shock me, but I'll slowly turn it down just so it's refreshing. Yeah, I like to be refreshed. Mm. Shit's good. Uh, yeah, I that's so. actually I prefer that. So a lot of a lot of people <clears throat> prefer like being cold and then just like warming up, like getting under a blanket and or in front of a fire. I'd rather be the opposite. I'd rather be really hot and jump in a cool cold pool. I think I know what you mean. It's just the opposite. So you are some people like I would not like not to they be don't cold. like right. But and then if I'm too cold, I'll just throw on a jacket or a blanket. I prefer to be cold too, but um, yeah. So like, yeah, I mean that's the point. You know, if it's hot outside, I hate being hot. So oh, yeah. I'll jump Fuck in a, that, a cold dude. a cold pool. Cold pool. Cold pool. Pool cool. Mm-hmm. Plo coon. Plo coon. As much as I love the summer and the nice weather, yeah, it's just. Yeah, I can't take it. It's fucking ridiculous. And our pool's not open yet, so I have no uh, redemption except for to get inside and try to fucking air conditioning or just go to Hoth. Anyways, Rogue Stars and Podcast, episode 32. Our sponsors for this week are New Wave Traders is number one. Our fantastic, fabulous sponsor. He has on his website for your enjoyment and purchase pleasure all of your retro amazingness that you want. Uh, he's got retro video games, consoles, Old collectibles, action figures, fucking Beanie Babies, Pokemon, some random ass shit. Uh, but a great selection. Everything is priced uh, really well. So there's just fun stuff on there without a box that you can buy for like five bucks. I got, hand me my Boba Fett. My Boba Fett. He's he's hiding. Camouflaged. <laughs> I got this, if you're watching. This little Boba Fett dude. Just action figure. There it is. Five dollars. 
And Androidica. He's five, no good to me, dead. Five dollars each. He's no good to me uh, uh, in the box. So yeah, he's got really cheap stuff. He also has like rare collectible stuff that's you know priced like crazy because it's supposed to be. So, but check it out. Uh, we love to um, show him some love. He shows us some love. NewWaveTraders.com and at New Wave Traders in your social media areas. So yeah, go hit him up. Tell him we sent you along. <clears throat> Secondably is Podcast Masters set up. Uh, no, we dropped them. We did. They suck. All right. Podcast failures. <laughs> Podcast apprentices. <laughs> they make us sound terrible on purpose. Podcast apprentices. <laughs> Podcast journeymen. Uh, but no, they <laughs> get us all set up with the mics, equipment, the recording software, um, mix everything after the fact, edit it all together, make sure it's all sounding good. Streaming it on Twitch, even though it's a pain in the ass. and We got to figure it out. It's, it's a pain in the ass. Oh, I'm talking about what the fuck we're doing over here. What? Live streaming a video. Yeah. I mean, that was... This is on Twitch, isn't it? Yeah. That, I mean, it was kind of a pain in the ass to set up, too, but now at least we got it. Yeah. But for streaming video games, Jesus, guys. Yeah. I don't even know what... You have to have a fucking degree in streaming on Twitch just to do it. Anyways, uh, Podcast Masters. That was delicious. <laughs> podcast Masters. That was you, man, from helps, that chip. Yeah. Helps to make our show sound as good as possible. Uh, and they help other shows. They do... They mix audio for uh, YouTube videos and Let's Plays and... Um, Video games, voiceovers, commercials, a little bit of everything. So if it involves audio, you should hit them up and they will fix your shit. Podcastmasters.net and at podcastmasters on social media and they do all that shit. So here you go. Uh, check them out. Without Be- further ado, what are beer, you say? beer meisters. Beer meisters. We're gonna get we're gonna do this. Let's aren't we? jump, let's do the beer review right away because I need a beer. And <laughs> mainly mainly should, for well, that reason. Well, I do we always like wait. 15, 20 minutes, and it cools down. Uh, you got the... Uh, warms up. Yeah. Yeah. This is... Yeah, let's do this first. It's uh, CBC's focus. Columbus Brewing Company's... It says Summer Teeth. Summer Teeth. I've actually never heard of it. Summer Teeth Lager. It says Crisp Unfiltered Golden Keller Beer. Golden. Golden I... Kel- Keller Beer. Keller? Helen Keller Beer? Mm-hmm. You're not going to see it or hear about it. <laughs> um, I am a fan of the majority of things I've had from uh, CBC, we Columbus did, Brewing Company. We, we did, did the IPA. IPA. It was IPA. good. Yeah. Um, and I've been hearing about the Summer Teeth for a while, and I haven't had it yet. So I'm excited that you bought it. What was the description again? Uh, crisp, unfiltered, golden Keller beer. What is a Keller beer? This. I know, but like, what defines a Keller beer? I don't know. I looked it up. Guys, uh, so we're gonna do summer teeth lager. Like we said, Columbus Brewing Company. Obviously, they're out of they're local to us. Um, we do enjoy most of their stuff. I'm not sure if I've ever had a bad thing by them, but that doesn't mean that all their stuff is delicious. But um, established when we were born, I like that. That's that's fact. I love it. Um, so all we're right. go for it. Smell test is uh. It kind, of smells, it, it kind of smells like a German Belgian, like Bex or Heineken. Or honestly, something. yeah, I was surprised because it doesn't smell like a uh, summer beer. So, where's the citrus? Anyways, here we go. Go. <sighs> hmm. It doesn't even taste summery. It doesn't even taste like anything, really. I do. No, I like it. It's it just not there's gross. There's, it's just. It does just taste like a. Uh, like a Belgian lager or like a, yeah, like a similar to a Heineken or something. Um, There's like a weird middle flavor right in there. So the beginning and the smell, beginning flavor I'm getting is the lager. Uh, but I'm puzzled by this shit right now, actually. I'm very confused. Let me hang on. We didn't shake it up too much either. Maybe the spices are at the bottom. Because it is unfiltered. Travis is yelling at us for not doing shit into a into a glass. It's already pre-glassed. And also, something about t-shirts. I don't know who likes t-shirts, but um, I like. I don't dislike it. I'm just like, I'm very confused as to what I'm well, tasting. Well, honestly, right if you pulled the uh, the label off and gave this to me, I probably would have guessed like a Heineken <laughs> or some Belgian something. It's a little thicker than a Heineken. Oh, man, this we didn't is very see weird. the uh, 
We might have to look up the uh, alcohol in it. It's so the what I'm what I'm getting at is it is not. I wouldn't guess that it was a summer. Absolutely not. Or a seasonal anything. It just tastes like a, a decent beer. Um, so that's why it's kind of throwing us off because there's that's no cool. there's no fruity. There's no like actual like different spices or anything. It just tastes like a, a decent lager. That's strange. That is strange. I'm 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 beyond confused. Did they label it wrong? <laughs> is this like their regular lager? This is weird as fuck. <laughs> it's not that weird. It just doesn't taste uh, summery. It's weird in the fact that you see summer beer, you're expecting something fruity or not just a like a regular standard lager or something. Yeah, this just tastes like a nice. It means good. It just tastes like a lager. It doesn't taste like a summer you know, teeth. Special craft ass beer that I want to review. I mean, yeah, it's not like terrible. It's no, I don't. It's no pickled Santa. I'm not really understanding the uh, summer teeth thing either. Like, so it's I a, think it's, it's a summer teeth up. is an album by some indie band. Oh, I think it's some little reference. Some, Un- some unfortunately, shit. Unfortunately, huh? Unfortunately, it's some like hipster reference. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> some people uh, who don't bathe. <laughs> <I> don't <know. laughs> ah, something about dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't even it. <laughs> Anyways, dreadlocks and toothless people. I heard about them. All the rest of them. They're called v- vegans, right? Vegans. Vegans. Those vegans. <laughs> They're taking over the city. Two vegans against a beer. Guys, I'm gonna give it a two, but but it's I'm really confused that I'm honestly leaning towards a one because I, it's I, not I, terrible, but it's nothing that you should really make an effort to. Go out and get right now. You, I mean, you can try it eventually if you find it, but it's not really worth going out of your way for. Yeah, I, I guess I'll agree with that because it really there is nothing it's special just a beer. about it. I mean, it tastes. What as, would you give a Heineken? Well, this is the problem. I don't normally consider those cheaper beers in part of our review system because they're a little different, and this is kind of tastes like those normal beers. So you'd have it every day, three. No, that doesn't that doesn't count. <laughs> Why? Because that that's not part of our system. All right, there's rules. We agreed on that. There are rules. He he forced me to sign. I want to play a game. There will be blood. That smells more like Batman than Jigsaw from Saw. Anyways, where um, are they? Rings up! <laughs> <laughs> Who made this beer? It put any spices in it. It's yeah, it's not gross, but it's nothing to write home about. I'm gonna say a one. You, if you, you if you see it, grab it once, try it at some point. But I would, yeah, it's a one. Well, the argument here is, uh, well, while it probably doesn't taste like a uh, uh, Heineken, but I, I I am getting like a like a European lager ish out of it. Um, price wise, it is not worth it at all. How you much could was get, it? I don't know, the normal. Craft six pack. Eight ninety nine, nine ninety nine. No, it was I think even more. It was like ten ninety nine. What? No way. That's not true. It was in the tens. Ten mm-hmm. or higher. I don't believe you. Um so you could get just a twelve pack of Stella or something and Yeah. And it's a or what did I say? Ten pack? Uh thirteen and a half pack. Baker's dozen. <laughs> a Belgian dozen. I want That's a unique idea for our brewery when we start it. Instead of doing 12 packs, do Baker's, Baker's Dozens. 13 packs. 13 beer packs. Anyways. Anyways, uh, our, our rundown of our rating system, if you ain't familiar. Don't do it. They know. They don't know. 32 episodes. Guys, look it up on our website. <laughs> Three is amazing. Two is decent. One is eventually try it. Zero is terrible. There, yep. there, there's a short rundown if you want to go that way. So Again. we're giving this a one. If you see it sometime or if it's on tap somewhere, give it a try once, but don't go out of your way to find it. It's just standard. Yeah, it just isn't worth uh, the price that you're going to pay for a six-pack. You could just get a, a regular lager anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Tastes like a Sam Adams. Bullshit. <laughs> Tastes- summer bullshit lager. <laughs> There's summer unflavoredness. <laughs> summer unbeer. <laughs> Rebeer. Um, but the, especially compared to the IPA, the Columbus IPA was really good. And this is just kind of, it's kind it's a beer, I guess. Something. Why would they produce this? Who's, uh, <laughs> I 
I mean, honestly, you're gonna spend all this time and money and marketing and distribution, and they're like, yeah, this tastes. Uh, let's let's sell it. Speaking of marketing, let me tell you. If I do have to turn on my radio, all I listen to is the alternative station in Columbus because it's at least a little better than the same five Katy Perry songs over and over again. But they have the same five ads over and over again, and one of them is this. I hear it like twice a day at forever. I don't. I got XM. I'm jealous of that. So I don't. I need to get a goddamn, um, mm-hmm. what do you call those? XM radio? Not XM, but a something that I can plug my uh, iPod into. Auxiliary. Well, yeah, but what's just the, name you're the, the head whole, unit? Yeah, head unit. Yeah, face face plate. Yeah, yeah. So I can plug in aux or Bluetooth and listen to podcasts and shit all day. Because the radio, I'm I'm very very surprised that radio is still a, a thing. Like traditional radio, well, that's, with the ads and everything. I'm uh, surprised that that still exists. Well, honestly, it will be going away because at one XM, I think eventually will be free because. Some guy is just going to get paid by the advertisers instead. You know, instead of people having to pay for subscriptions. So the ad- advertisings will be paid for. Yeah. But, you know, and you can pick so such specific music. That's the thing. Porn Grind XM Radio. You can go. You can go. You can find anything online, really. Yeah, and, well, and you can just download, uh, just like you said, as soon as you have an aux, there's no way I'm listening to the radio. Right. I can put on whatever fuck I want. Exactly. But that is the... the just old people listen to the radio. That is one of the benefits of um, XM Radio is you can just pick like a specific genre that you love. Um, so I'll listen to Liquid Metal, um, but they, they are up to date on their new bands and stuff. So I get to hear stuff that I wouldn't listen to because I didn't know about. Is it kind of like Pandora then? I mean, it's it's radio. It's I know, but satellite it's satellite radio, so understandable. But they have. I always use Spotify because I could pick exactly what I want, right? Instead of Pandora, where you pick what you like and then they'll give you like suggestions and shit. You know what I mean? XM Radio, you don't get to pick. It's radio. I yeah. I know. <laughs> so no, I'm it's not to like it's it to, not like Spotify. I can plug in my phone and listen to whatever I want, or I can go to XM and pick a genre and get played shit that I like. That was my point. They're I know just, it's they're not, not even a genre. You just you just pick a channel. So Ozzy's Boneyard's a channel. So everything like like Black Eight. Sabbath and Lighter. Yeah. And then you have I have Liquid Metal, which is like the heaviest pig pig raper. That was my point. The point was lost. <sighs> Doesn't matter because Lord Carner is marrying Katy Perry. He says he's bad. What? Katy Perry is Lord Carner's future wife. This just in. Good job of no bother. Ah. Um, all right, Old so. Jedi mind trick. Old Jedi mind job. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Whoopie doobies. <laughs> Whoopie doobies. Uh, we were quoting Batman earlier. Um, I watched Dark Knight. We were at our, I was at my favorite used game shop locally. Uh, play it, trade it. If you're in Columbus, check them out. Um, Dark Knight, $4 on Blu-ray. Pick that shit up. I watched it. I love it. It's one of the best movies ever made. There, there's about ten seconds that make me want to kill myself, and that is when Batman talks in an extremely low voice. It's only a few lines though. Yeah. Where are they? And this city just showed you that they are doing that and shit like that. And it's <laughs> it's cringeworthy. I don't I don't understand. Sometimes he's talking to Gordon and he's just talking in a low voice and it sounds fine. But sometimes it's extreme and you can tell they like enhanced the bass and boosted the volume and it's just I don't know. It's like Sidious when he finally turns Anakin and all of a sudden he has like he's in a coliseum. There's good. 12 Sidious. Good, 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 good. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. So obviously that doesn't deter from the movie. It's just when that pops up I'm just like, "What? Why? What?" <clears throat> it, takes me, um, it's, it, it takes me off guard for a second. So The Dark Knight is probably, I'm going to go ahead and say it, probably my favorite movie in the past 10 years. Probably by far, actually. Um, so so one, the soundtrack, duh. Yeah. That was my favorite thing from a musician <laughs> standpoint is, there, especially coming from Star Wars where John, like there's specific themes that you can sing for each like character or whatever. 
there is no Batman theme in the new one. It's like a chord change. And the Joker theme is just like this eerie sound. Like, it's not like something that you can sing. Like, you know Darth Vader's Imperial March. Everyone can sing that shit. So, yeah, that was awesome. It was a huge step because, like you said, it, it's not, it's not, I don't want to say it's not music, but it's just like not traditional drums and stuff. It's just like a collection of sounds that you know what's coming up mentally. Hell yeah. That's why um, it's awesome. And we don't have to talk about the Joker anymore. Uh, Heath Ledger was awesome in that. Um, Flawless role. Good evening, ladies, and I'm not going to try. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ladies. <laughs> gentlemen. You know, my favorite part is like, do you know Harvey Dent is? I didn't say anything for like 10 seconds. Have you seen Harvey Dent? <laughs> <laughs> you know Harvey Dent is? You know who he is? Have you seen him? No. All right. <laughs> I love it. You remind me of my uncle. I didn't know him. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Um, Travis says one of the best movies ever made. Seriously, I think he's being sarcastic. No. Yes, it is. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think that if you had to pick your favorite superhero movie, would you pick Dark Knight? Yeah, I, there's nothing that I would even think to put next to it. I, I think would, everything is two notches down. Well, you haven't seen the new Avengers, and I would say I would say Dark Knight, Avengers one, and Guardians were like very close. But now Avengers 2, I would put the out. Avengers Age of Ultron, definitely. My favorite oh, wow. superhero it's, movie. Wow. You're always changing you it, it on week to week. So you should watch uh, Dark Knight one more time and then. Well, we'll it just we'll came re- out. Avengers just came out. Right, right. So we'll reconvene in a week. and. Uh, well, next time a groundbreaking superhero movie comes out, I'll change my list. See, I don't change my list. As soon as I see a new any movie, movie that comes out, never gonna never. No, ever. it just takes a lot more than just a new movie for me to change my list. Gone with the Wind, best superhero movie. Anything that comes out, I'm not changing it. I don't Gone, care. Gone with the Force Lightning. <laughs> Gone with the Storm. Um, but I no, it's I want to see it a few more times. But I think the new Avengers is 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 near flawless. It's it's amazing. Can um, we? Uh, is it a spoiler? <clears throat> can I ask a question about it? Sure. Um, I don't know if it's a spoiler until you. Spider Man? No, he's not in it. Then why no. was there like awkward hype? Like they released it just in time for the movie. I think the hype was that he was going to be in the third one. Oh, okay. Because the second, but by the time they said that, the second one was like basically done. There's only like, eh, like four months left. So it's really not enough time to add someone into the entire fucking thing. I didn't know if they were already working on it. So they just like had him in the movie. And then when, if it were to fall through, they could just do it without him or I don't know. I. All right, that's a good point. Let's let's chat about that. I would love to see Spider-Man in a Marvel movie collection like Avengers or something. The way that they portrayed Spider-Man in the past few movies, I don't see how he could fit into the Avengers though. How where would he if come from? If that makes from sense, like the Avengers is much of the issues that they have, they've had their powers for a while, not a long time, but long enough that they're kind of professional, I guess I would say, at what they're doing. And Peter Parker's still trying to figure it out, and he's like this, like a teenager taking photographs, still trying to. Well, it could, they could just alter the timeline, and and you know, while all the the first two movies were happening, mm-hmm. Peter Parker could have been growing up. Maybe those those first two movies take four or five years to actually happen. <clears throat> so the kid's fifteen now; he's twenty, and he's yeah. like actually Spider Man. That makes sense. So they could mess with it. It's um, possible. I would definitely love to see him in it. I just don't know how it would work, but they they would make it happen. I think slowly after I th- uh, think about it, um, if I if I was asked who's my favorite Marvel character, well, I do like Iron Man. He's kind of just he really is just a guy in a suit, and I that's why I kind of like him. That's kind of the attraction to uh, Batman. He's just a um, Fame, a famous millionaire in a suit, but Batman he almost he struggles with his own identity and what he's supposed to do and is he doing good? Iron Man is I, I think he, a little more one sided. You know, he's just a guy in a suit. What he does is right because Tony Stark's just an idiot. You know, well no, he can't do any wrong. Yeah, that is the only issue with Iron Man. Even like, if he's people, cool, but he's such a dick. Yeah, and even if he is wrong, you know. He doesn't he's, care. He's, he's not gonna do it anyways, yeah, yeah. You know? So, um, which I can do be like, bad though, as right, a hero. Right. I do like the Hulk, but again, he's a little one sided. There's no character struggle there. The, the struggle is the character. He's he's just a raging 
Well, Death there machine. is. It's him like. Once he becomes a Hulk, is there a character other than R- Rage? Well, no, but it's it's uh, Banner trying to decide if he wants to let himself become the Hulk at all, or like just stop and like go into hiding and never. He already did go into hiding. Because it's such like, it, yeah, I can become the Hulk and like and win and beat the bad guys, but I also might freak out and run to a city and just kill a bunch of innocent people for no reason. So like, do I take that chance or do I stop? Yeah. So. That's the struggle. They they do that a little bit more in the second one. That I guess uh, even across the board outside of superheroes, I like that internal um, character struggle. Who are they? What are they doing? That's why I really like the Walter Whites. You know, he he was very defined at the beginning, but he just slowly twisted. And is he doing good? And what's he doing it for? So I, that's and even why if he's I, evil, we're still rooting for him. They would done. Yeah, yeah, he's one of my favorite characters. Yeah, they but, do a uh, lot more uh, character development. Not character development, I shouldn't say, but uh, like a little bit of backstory on some of the characters in Avengers 2. Okay. I won't tell you how, but it's good. Um, I don't know too much about the other ones. So I would, with all that given, Thor... Thor's a god. Thor does have a cool backstory, and I do like it, but again, I don't know. I would say Spider-Man. Spider-Man's probably my favorite Marvel character. Um, let's jump back onto the chat here for a second. We got a few comments. Um, Travis says Daredevil with Ben Affleck is the best superhero movie of all time. I don't know too much. Of- oh, wow. That was sarcasm. Yeah, no. <laughs> the same. He says, go see Avengers now. Spider-Man has almost always been with the Avengers in the comics or at least teamed up. So that makes me hopeful that he'll be in the third one. That'd be cool. Iron Man has a lot of sides to him. Did you see any of the Iron Man movies? Yes. I've seen one and two. It's been a while. Have you seen all the Iron Man movies? Uh, I couldn't watch two. The guy with the whips. I was just like. I mean, it was a little outrageous. And then I didn't even know there was a three. I didn't have not watched three at all. Uh, Tony Stark struggles with what his company did in the first one with his image in the second and his humanity in the third one. So the first one, there was no struggle because it was not him. I'm talking about, well, okay. Well, no, first, he ca- realizes like he spent his whole life just making having this company and making weapons and being a millionaire, never knowing what the consequences of those weapons actually do. And then he sees that firsthand and that's what, you know, drives him to become the fucking Iron Man. Yeah. Which I get in the Iron Man movies themselves, that makes sense. But in the Avengers, he's just an ass the entire time. He's like, I know what's going to be good for humanity. I'm going to do that no matter what my team says. And that's just what's going to happen. Well, you know what's funny is one of my favorite parts about or during the first Avengers is when him and Captain America going at it like they always do. Always. And then he's, I love it. he's like, what was it? Captain America was yelling at him. He's like, well, what are you? And he's just like, billionaire, uh, genius, philanthropist, oh, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And that, and what's her face just looked at him. He's like, yeah, it's pretty fucking true. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's all of it. Genius, billionaire, whatever. That's the love hate. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. He's dead on. He's like perfect. But he's got a little too much hubris. He's just going to do whatever he thinks is right, whether it actually is right or not. <clears throat> this, so. this is going to segue real quick, and I don't want to bring it up right away yet. Um, so I don't know why I'm talking. Uh, so I don't want to bring this Spider-Man, up. I'm bring it up. Spider-Man would be if I had to pick. See, th- see, that's the wishy-washy thing because X-Men is still part of Marvel, and a lot of the it X-Men is. are are some of my favorites. It sure is. Um, but if I had to pick one character, wow. Do you know what's another one that I really like? So I want to say Spider-Man, but another one that I really like is Magneto. Oh, he's sweet because he's smart. While he is a villain, Xavier still understands why he's doing it. And that's why, like, when they come face to face, just like, hey, Charles. Fuck you. <laughs> what up? <laughs> but they, they don't, like, while their their armies are almost trying to kill each other, as soon as they come in, they're like, dude, what are you doing, man? You shouldn't be fucking around. <laughs> he's like, hey, Charles, I wear this metal uh, bitch on my head. Magneto reminds me, I was going to say Sidious. But he's do- he is actually a- is doing good for his people. That's why I almost, that's why I kind of took it back. Sidious is doing good him. for like him. him and Vader. Well, just him. Um, but yeah, so he thinks he's doing the right thing for the mutant species as a whole. And Xavier even which understands. makes sense if you think about it. I just watched the first X-Men last night or two nights ago, last night. Um, they bring the case of, well, they bring like the idea of mutants 
to the U.S. government, and they want to, like, completely contain them and lock them away and not let them do anything, which is kind of probably what would happen if that Oh, yeah. That they actually just get happened. scared, scared of differences. Exactly. So Magneto's trying to protect his own. Which, which makes, makes which him make, look even more evil for, for, to the humans. Right, but he's doing it from a good, a good standpoint. So, yeah, I love Magneto. He's awesome. So if I had to, well, that's fine. Magneto and Spider-Man, if I were forced to pick two. If I had to pick a favorite Marvel superhero, I would pick who I've picked for many years, and I can't really explain why. But the Human Storm. Torch. I've always loved the Human Torch. I can't really tell you why. He's just a flying flame guy. Okay. I don't know. That's just, I've always gravitated. I love the Fantastic Four. I've always loved the Human Torch. Uh, after seeing Avengers, Hawk is fantastic. But I'm, I'm just thinking from, like, what I've... You didn't watch the Spider-Man stuff when you were a kid? Yeah. With Tobey Maguire? Tobey Maguire? No. The, the cartoon. Oh, yeah. I watched Spider-Man okay. and X-Men. I watched more Spider-Man. There was, some, there was a Spider-Man... They would always bring back some of the old stuff, too. And there was a whole series that was Spider-Man with the Fantastic Four. Oh, I don't remember that. That I watched a lot, yeah. Huh. So that, and then the Fantastic Four movie was pretty bad, but I was young enough that I still watched it a few times. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I can't explain it. He just flies around and he sets himself on fire. It's nothing special. I just, I've always, I've always loved him. And then the Hulk after Avengers. Tra- Trav Meister. fucking. Tra- Trav Meister said Spider-Man. Spider-Man's, he's awesome. I'm not going to lie. I, I like, so what I like about Spider-Man uh, is a lot of, a lot of times this is his villains. Um, how his villains are almost just him, just stronger. And it's just like, well, how am I supposed to be me stronger? And That's an actually alien. a good point. Some and of his villains alien. are out of control. <laughs> Sandman and Sandman was outrageous, actually. Clay well, they I think I thought he was Clayman in this in the cartoons. Correct me if I'm wrong, Travis. That's Clayface. Clay That's face. Batman. That's Batman, I think. Maybe that's what I was. And he just changed, I think with. he's a shapeshifter. I think, yeah. I both, okay, maybe maybe you're you're probably right because I was trying to look stuff up and I couldn't find anything. Maybe that's why Clayface was Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the animated think, series, Batman the animated series. Well, in Arkham, they give you like a little my favorite Marvel. <laughs> Kerner's favorite Marvel character is Sidious. That's that's great, Kerner. Because Sidious has I just love when you contribute deceived, to the conversation. Deceived and become chancellor of the Marvel universe, and everyone's dead. We'll talk about that in a bit too. I do love Sidious. Um, in Arkham, they give you little background bios of all the uh, villains and heroes, and then that, that's in your hey Lebet a Lebet 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 Lebet. What's up? Welcome to the chat. Lebeti Lebeti. Do what must be done. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do not hesitate. Kill all Marvels. Stop before we fucking right. quote the entire movie. Right. Um, I don't even know what I'm saying. Okay. Well, we're going to end this. So your, your favorite's Tumen, the Tumen Horch. The Tumen Horch and the cock. <laughs> the cock. The hawk and uh, Human Torch. All right. Uh, Spider-Man and, and Magneto. Oh, shit. Even though Magneto's not technically, technically a superhero, but... Well, you know, we know what you Marvel, mean. Marvel versions. We know um, what you mean, y'all. What came out not too long ago? Batman vs. Superman trailer. Yeah. You watched it. Yeah, we talked about that. Hulk. With Kerner. Sorry. I thought we talked about it with uh, Istan Trey. No, we talked about it with Erna K, I think. Damn. I think? Yeah, because that came out the same, the same day as Force Awakens trailer. Oh, okay. I don't remember. Okay. We can talk about it still if you want. I don't know too much about it. I haven't seen Man of Steel, so I can't really say. I haven't seen... I don't think I've ever seen a Superman movie. I used to I just like Superman dislike him when that I was much. really young, and I've seen some of the cartoon uh, little movie things, but I haven't seen any of the actual movies. Yeah, I just said something about Superman I've never really enjoyed, so I just haven't watched any of them. I'm, I may have accidentally watched like the first of the... Superman movies. Yeah. But um, we'll have to, I want to hear, we'll have to have Travis on when he's back in Columbus to give us some more insight on Superman. Because we always say, well, Superman's stupid. He can just do everything and never die. Well, but he, Travis always has something to say about it, which I appreciate because he knows more about comics than Right. Do, but so he, I just want to hear some, <clears throat> I just want to hear an argument in Superman's case. Well, 
from my understanding, Superman found out his his entirety, his identity and everything. And he wasn't ready, so he did a mental block on a lot of his powers. So he's slowly like unlocking those powers. So he's as he gets stronger and stronger, you know, he's he doesn't ha- he's not fully capable right off the bat. Hmm. He limits himself. But that's crazy because that's how strong he is. <laughs> that is crazy. He's like force mind tricking himself. You don't oh, know this until tomorrow. Everything. He is kind of <laughs> force persuading himself. Forget the powers that you know. Forget it all. Um. You guys need to see Man of Steel first, or else the trailer will make zero sense, Travis says. It um, made sense to me. Kind of. It did make sense. The point was Superman saved some people, but did it in the wrong way, and the citizens do not like him. That's what I got from the trailer. Uh, I wouldn't. I, I could watch it. Paul's partially right, but also very wrong. <laughs> So is it like partly, you're kind of right, part, but 100% terrible. Like partly cloudy. Is it more cloudy or more sunny? Partly sunny, your more abil- cloudy. Your ability to understand Superman has diminished. Say it. What? Say it. I don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> you're partly partially right, but also very wrong. I don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> Thank oh, you, Kerner. Yeah, Paul is always right. He never bullshits. Yeah, that's true. I've never said anything wrong. Fucking Grand Moff Melton. Grand Moff. Uh, I don't know. I like. I like. So we've gone through the, the entire thousands as far as dates yeah. was like superhero decade. And it's it's oh, it's not even. Well, off. I know. I know. But we're, we're slowly getting into the part where superheroes are shunned in the movies. So superheroes were just fuck asses running around saving the day. They looked awesome. Shit was blowing up. You were learning about the Hulk and all of them. Now, all of a sudden, the Dark Knight and. The new super, the Superman versus Batman, like they're not always good and or perfect. Yeah. We're the, and and then we're looking at people's uh, views of them. So <laughs> it's cool to see like the hero become the anti-hero while they the, while they stayed the same person. Because I agree. Of- yeah, it's cool because if you think about it, like the citizens in a real city wouldn't blindly just accept. Some random like god that just dropped in and was like, "Hey, like I'm gonna Thor. help. I'm gonna help you guys out." Like Thor. Yeah. So they wouldn't do that. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I meant God in the way is like some person that has like crazy, crazy, crazy powers. Oh, like, like someone just Thor? drops in and is just like, "Hey, I'm gonna save your city." Sure, that's fine. But the more realistic thing is people are gonna be like scared of something that they don't understand, and that's why I like how some of these movies are doing that. It's like they're kind of. They're they're doing good, but they're it's kind of risky. Like people don't always want to accept it right off well, the bat. Well, it's not like you know Batman. I mean? yeah. He can even become that person that they blame. That's usually what they do in the movies too. Like even the first four movies, like throughout them, they there was times where he was praised by the citizens, and times where the Penguin made the citizens hate him and think he was a fucking murderous asshole, and they all hated him for a bit, and then they, he had to come back. So I like it. I like it a lot. I'm happy. <laughs> that was the most <laughs> nonchalant. I'm excited. But yeah, I, I haven't seen Man of Steel, so it's tough to really say too much about the Batman versus Superman. I'm excited to see um, an, a re I want to say a reboot of Batman, but it kind of is. Reboot of Batman with Ben Affleck. Yeah. I think he looked decent in the trailer. That one helmet that he has that's like all like platinum with the white eyes kind of looked dumb, but otherwise. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, his look as Bruce Wayne, I was totally cool with. That helmet, I don't know. I don't. We'll see what it was for in the movie. But, um, speaking of, I want Batman to have a Boston Boston accent. Boston accent. Hey, Joker, get the fuck out of here! Hey, that was like more. Fucking bring my beer back! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that even was. I don't was. know. Beer back here. Um, I think about you here, back here. He looked like Lego Batman. Who did? Lego. He, yeah, he did actually look like Lego Batman. That's a good point. What did? Uh, that helmet that I was talking about in the Batman vs. Superman trailer. It's more like, mmm. Mm, it's, it's a Lego movie, actually. You just didn't understand that at first. But I, uh, I uh, made, you, made you believe it. Um, speaking of superhero movie, <laughs> what are you looking for? I'm watching. Superhero movies uh, going crazy. Do you have? Did you catch on to 
all those like powerful gems that they've been finding in the Marvel movies, in Avengers, the first Avengers, and in Guardians. No. Or no. Some people don't. It's kind of subtle. Anyways, there's this whole overarching giant plot line that's going to bring all of the movies storylines like together into some epic thing. So all the Iron Man's, Captain America's, um, the Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and whatever other Marvel movies are going to make. Uh, Ant-Man, actually. We talked about that once. The trailer. Okay, strings. What's your superpower? <laughs> I can fit I into a goddamn beer bottle, bitch. <laughs> So they're all going to converge in this epic storyline. So we're there's going to be a whole series of Marvel movies for not, a while. Kerner said they're not using uh, Ben Affleck's voice, which is good. I haven't heard that. You mean when he's in the suit, you mean? I don't know. That's a weird... Kerner's probably bullshitting. Kerner, what are you talking about, dude? They're only, they only using Ben's voice. Or they are not using Ben's voice, which is good. Does that mean like when he's in the suit... As Batman, he, they're not using Ben Affleck's actual voice and someone else, like kind of Darth Vader style. Uh, elaborate. Anyways, superhero stuff. You didn't even say elaborate. You're just like, elaborate that shit. Elaborate that shit. Hey, dude, laminate it. Laminate it. <clears throat> uh, superheroes are awesome. They're awesome. Moving on. Uh, okay, what do we got? Vanity Fair shoot of the characters established. Badass photo shoot. I didn't even see it. I just saw the... the uh, Cover. Really? We should look that up. I'm gonna pull that shit up right meow, buddy. Star Wars Vanity Fair photo shoot. Uh let's see what it says. There we go. These videos. Here we go. So the main cover, if you haven't seen it, of Vanity Fair is Han, Chewy, Ray, and what is uh John Boyega's character's name? Uh, the Black Storm Trooper. I can't remember off the top of my head. R- and BB-8 sitting in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, hanging out, um, scrolling down. Oh, okay, here we got some photos. So, Poe Dameron, who is that pilot that we see in the X-Wing in the trailers. I love that they stayed with the uh, the suit. Yeah, it looks awesome. A oh. bunch of random alien characters, which is cool because it's just like the original trilogy. They're all in actual makeup and costumes. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Okay, here we go. The Chrome Trooper everyone's been talking about for years. For is. years. For it years. Just came, came out. For decades. <laughs> wow, I can't believe I said that. Um, coolest, maybe one of the coolest characters we've seen in the trailer. The worst name of anyone that I've seen so far. Phasma. Captain Phasma. The hell is that? It's pretty bad. Plasma with an H. It's pretty bad considering Kylo Ren. I everyth- thought it was already terrible. But everything. Plasma. Everything Mandalorian has been fucking on awesome. Candorous Ordo, Cassius Fett, Boba Fett. The Phasma. fuck is Phasma? Phasma Fett. Captain Fap. Captain, fuck that name, Asthma. <laughs> Captain Asthma. Captain Asthma. There you go. What if they has a breathing apparatus? <sighs> well, at least we know the Chrome Storm Trooper is not fucking Boba Fett because everyone was talking shit about that for years. We're just like, it's not Boba Fett. Relax. Uh, for it's Captain years. Phasma. Uh, years. Yeah. <laughs> All it's exaggeration. Years. You know what I mean? Uh, and Captain Phasma, the Chrome Storm Trooper, is played by. Gwendolyn Christie, who is Brienne of Tarth in Game of Thrones. The big blonde woman. And if you've seen Game of Thrones... She's a badass. You know, she's a fucking badass. So we're excited to see her in action in Star Wars. He's saying it's not Phasma, it's Phasma? That doesn't make it any better. There there wasn't anything above it. There wasn't anything above it. Let me see. Well, there's no subtitle for that one. Anyways. Phasma. I don't know what that is. So here we see confirmed... That Adam Driver is indeed the actor who plays Kylo Ren. He's in a suit without the mask and hood. Also, it says in the subtitles. The bad guy, Kylo Ren, played by Adam Driver, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, when I first saw this photo, I thought it looked Photoshop, actually. It looks like the stormtroopers were shot in like a snowstorm, and then they just put him in there. I think doesn't well, it kind of look weird? <clears throat> right. I, they blend in so well. I'm sure it's not. It's in fucking Vanity Fair, but still it looks. Kind of fake. Yeah. I like the 
contrast there. Like, obviously, there's something you're supposed to be focusing on, and it's fucking right in front Kylo of Ren. Yeah. And that's, I'm excited because even George Lucas did that with, you know, episode one was all sand. Right. Or episode four, I'm talking. Everything was sand. Episode five, everything was snow, hoth. Episode six was green with Endor and everything. Mm-hmm. So I think J.J. might be using that to his advantage. I mean, that's what we're used to. So he might be really focusing on how stuff compares and contrasts. Commands. Because you know, you know who's <clears throat> evil. Yeah. You know who's evil right away. Darth Vader walks in, shiny black character, crazy suit. That's the bad guy. Bad guy Kylo Ren commands snow troopers loyal to the evil First Order. So is that the name of the new empire, I guess? First Order? The 502nd. I feel like they're leaking little details one at a time until all the way leading up to December. They're just going to give us the movie. If we... Copy and paste all this stuff together. We bitch enough to JJ. <laughs> just going to tell us enough shit. So there we go. Kylo Ren. Here we see some acting. Well, it's it's some fake directing Is shot. He J- at JJ's, butt? JJ's pointing like he's acting, but or like he's directing, but he's actually not. Ray's on a speeder. I don't know who the these other people are. We got. We'll, we'll post a link. But if you're a Star Wars fan, you probably already saw these anyways. It's on Jakku. Yeah, it's on Jakku. We, that's the little the speeder that we saw in the first trailer that we thought looked weird, and it does. Producers and white people. Oh wait, shit! Go back, John Williams. Hmm. John Williams. How old is that bastard? <laughs> He's, He's getting a up motherfucker, there. dude. He's probably the best composer of the 20th century. I'm gonna say that. You know, I'll you did say that. Me. I'm gonna say this. No, you know, I'll disagree with me. He's 83. That's up there. Damn. Better be keeping healthy, bro. You got to do episode eight and nine, and Rogue One, and the Boba Fett spinoff. We'll talk about that later. Who's gonna take his place once he croaks? I. Oh, man, this is the same thing I said when when Heath Ledger passed away, and they were talking about doing the Joker again, and people said, "Oh, Johnny Depp should just do it because that makes sense." No, that's not true. And I hope if John Williams does pass, unfortunately, I hope they don't just say, oh, Hans Zimmer should do Star Wars because Hans Zimmer's amazing. I don't think, I don't agree with that. John Williams has crafted such a specific style. mood and style yeah. around Star Wars. Like it's only him. If he can do seven, eight, and nine, anyone else after that can kind of take it and rebrand it in a new way. Yeah, make their own. But if he does seven and then someone else does eight, that's gonna be that's gonna be weird. That's gonna be a complete shift, and I I don't like that. I don't think it should be like Hans Zimmer or someone. I don't know. Hans Zipper. I don't know. I will say though, um, Kevin Kiner, who did the music for the Clone Wars cartoon, his like new arrangements of the main themes, I liked a lot. Like the intro, he changed like the Star Wars intro theme a little bit. I liked I liked all of his stuff. But that's for a cartoon series. It's different than the movie. So it doesn't have to be as epic and we'll see. drawn out. And so we'll see. Good. But I'm overall, I'm excited. <laughs> we saw a lot with these photos. Like I said, I feel like they're releasing little details here and there. Excuse me. It's all in the details. <laughs> you will show us more, JJ. Travis says, who would do the music? No music for the rest of the Star Wars movies? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just, I feel like... Obviously, between the two Hans Zimmer is the hugest composer at this time. Hugest. And I feel... The biggest, and whatever. And I feel like there would be an inclination from a lot of people to just say, oh, Hans is amazing, so he should do Star Wars, whether or not he's actually fit to do Star Wars or not. Especially if John Williams does seven. Like, how are you going to do eight, nine, and tie it together? It's going to be kind of strange, in my opinion. That's just me. It's going to be so apparent, too, because he does have such a style. Oh, yeah. They would do the, the same intro for the, the title crawl, and then all of a sudden, it would just be like, what the fuck is this? Bloops who, who and bloops. Did, uh, blips and bubbles. <laughs> uh, who did uh, The Dark Knight? Hans. Hans. So it's just like... That's why I'm saying that. Dark just n- the episode whole Dark seven. Da, 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 and then episode eight's just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kylo Ren's theme is just like... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. No, Hans is amazing. I love Hans Zimmer. He, he might be so one of my favorites. There. But 
I don't think he's the right fit for Star Wars. And if they threw him in just because he's good, I don't think that's the that's the right choice. Look what I'm trying to do right here. Look at what I'm doing. Paul's talking. It was beer. You know what's funny is while I was talking in my beer, what I was going to say is how much have you had to drink? And I'm talking into my goddamn beer cap. I've had them all. Watch. watch gotta this. gotta drink them all. Gotta drink them all. Piro man. Nice. You made that basket. I try again. Um, <clears throat> Vanity yeah. Fair is complete. So what we're gonna let's let's jump around just a tad. We already touched on the Chrome Trooper being what's her name? Think about that. We know who the Chrome Trooper is. We know who Kylo Ren is now. Actor wise, you could probably well yeah I guess that's true. We don't know what his backstory is yet. Yeah, you don't know anything about the character. Yeah. But still, what are you, what are you well, about? well, I guess I was saying because on IMDb, there's a whole list of all the actors, but no one knows who they're playing except for the original trilogy. And now we know at least a few of the people and who they are. We still don't know who Andy Serkis is. Wow. I just had a mind. Well, I can't. And that's going to be, be a big mind. one, man. I wonder. So, okay. It really, uh, there's so much going through my mind. So I'm really trying to understand JJ's approach on star wars and have it not be similar to star trek he made everything shiny while i do really really enjoy the new star treks um i think if he just does star trek star wars if you know what i'm saying the same deal Mm -hmm. it's not gonna work i agree so but from what we've seen so far i don't think he's gonna do that i think it's very similar though Really? We, the first thing we see is Jakku, which is a like a planet. With- first thing we see in the in Into Darkness is some crazy planet, and there's some yellow people running around. No, I'm to- not talking about crazy planet. I'm talking about some desert planet with a bunch of like scraps and down ships and destruction shit. Okay. Which is not shiny and new awesomeness like it was. Oh, Star Trek, I see. That, is that, that, that's what I meant. I'm, I'm I haven't thinking seen a lens flare yet, so that's so much better. That's true. I'm thinking he's going straight mirror image of four in the way it was made. That's what I'm seeing from these shots and what we've seen in the trailers. It's like I'm we're doing everyone's in costume, we're building sets, we're doing everything from scratch. That's how it's gonna be. And especially unfortunately the fact that it's on a fucking desert planet again. Everyone loves deserts and fucking snow. That's kind of what I'm seeing from it. Well, everyone complains about the prequels, but uh, Volcano Planet and I a lot of different about, stuff. I, we got, we got, we got Look at uh, Geonos- about, Geonosis. That's a fucking awesome planet. But uh, episode two sucks. I, I, there's a lot of stuff. Well, while uh, what was I watching? I watched that uh, commentary that Raper do on the he does on the all the movies. So not a Raper. I I know I on while Red I was watching okay. Red Letter Media. Yeah, while I was watching his his commentary, the second one he didn't have that as good as points as the first one. But uh, one of the suggestions was uh, ten things George Lucas did right about the prequels, and it was so blaring. Like, God, I didn't even realize that that was a huge difference from the the originals. And it, and. and Another list right under that was 10 th- th- things that he did right about the special editions. He said it was $10 million. Five of it went into sound. Sound quality, upgrading, just the music, the way, the just all of it. The special effects sounds and all of it. Mm. He said half the budget went into just sound production. I like that. Well, yeah. So, And then the other ones went into creating, you know, Banthas coming into... Screen. Dude, I have really good and really bad things to say about all of them, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's true. I probably shit on four as much as I do the prequels. I shit on four more. I, you know what I mean? I love the setting. Because we, we say acting's terrible in three, but look at, dude, look at Mark Hamill. Yeah. I in mean, episode so, four, it's pretty bad. to be a 19-year-old baby back bitch. True. He plays it pretty well. <laughs> and but. again, supposed to be fucking Darth Vader. He's a baby back bitch. Are you kidding me? He's confused. You don't know. I don't know, bro. Here to kill me. My point of view. The podcast is evil. And my point of view. My um, acting's decent. It's. I don't know. I love the setting of it. That's the hard thing to. 
to like agree upon. I love the setting of it. I love the action sequences and I love the overall plot. But when you watch the movie from start to finish, it's just like there's so many fucking dumb things. And we just did the episode two commentary, and you know we pointed out just as much as I did. Actually, I was surprised. It's just fucking ridiculous. I was surprised how little we pointed out. I thought that was one Gonna movie. be the most. We still did a lot more well, than like five or six. Well, though. come on. I disagree. Um, the romantic scenes were obvious because they're just awkward. But other than that, stupid things oh, well, that they never got explained, like well, fucking Obi Wan's friend in the diner. Why? It doesn't matter. That's just. But th- that's the little things. Like, why does he know so much about Camino? What the fuck? He knew where to go. Why are they Obi-Wan's playing fucking friends. Star Wars blues music in the background? Why not? Because the Star Wars raised my space. Why there. is the ability to use the force diminished? What does that mean? And why? That's the fuck. The one that's scene. The, stuff that the I'm one about. scene in that was that was really cringeworthy was that robot factory when they're just stumbling around in that fucking factory. Pointless, cringeworthy. It that was really cringeworthy. They could have taken that entire thing out and just said, "Jedi walk up into this coliseum." Why do I need to watch C three PO fumble around? And it's not even comedic. I laugh. You laughed at Jar Jar. A little bit, yeah. It, no, it happened. But hey, oh boyos, like <laughs> yeah, that was funny. That's ridiculous. <laughs> but then it's just C three PO just getting. Knocked around and yeah. getting his head replaced. With and then Sem- Senator Amidala following to a, a lava can. Like, why is this part of this movie? That's just the stuff that's, like, unnecessary. That whole scene is very bad. But I don't know. There's a lot of scenes. Yoda with the flashlight. You know, there's a lot. Like I said, I love the setting of the prequels. But, like, at movie wor- movie-wise, it's just... I don't know. Once we watch, once we do episode three commentary, I will make my final decision. Because that's the last one that I got to see that we everyone loves because the plot is huge in that one and the action sequences are huge. I agree. But once I watch that one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with a final. Thesis I guarantee on you the prequels. I guarantee you what you're gonna be looking at, what you're gonna be making fun of is Aiden Christensen's acting and the lines. That's it. That's it. Not just his lines. That's it. Yeah, we'll so no, no, lines lines across the board. Oh, yeah. A lot of Obi-Wan stuff is just like, come on, you could have said something better. But lines and Hayden's acting. Other Ray than shields. that. How did this happen? What's smarter than this? Why do you need to say that, Jedi? Just don't get caught in the fucking Ray Shields. Ray Shields. It happens. Ray Shields. Ray Shields happen. Sith Lords are speciality, even though I've only met two. He killed them. There was only two to begin with. So he killed them all. But how is that their specialty if he only knows two of them? It's not. It's his speciality. D- he got his ass kicked the first time and the second time. He killed Darth Maul and he lost to Dooku twice. Speciality. I'm, I'm really good <laughs> at losing these fuckers. I'm so specially. Alities. <laughs> Jesus, God. Yeah. No, I. Hey, like I said, I There's got more good, lightsaber I got fights. Good and bad things to say about both of them. There's more lightsaber fights in three than and by there's both ever of them, been. I mean, all six of them. Ever. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll lay down final judgment when I after we do the episode three commentary. I'll be like, all right, this is my thesis on why they suck. Thesis. This is my <laughs> my dissertation on what the fuck happened. Essay. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyways. What's Battlefield next? news. Battlefield or Battlefront? Battlefield front news. What news have we had? Um, did you learn something new? I did. What did they say? That's what I'm bringing up. Or is EA redeeming themselves or what? Um, so says, real. George got the idea for the factory scene in episode two over a weekend, and it was a late edition. Fucking idiot. Why did he have to drink during that weekend? <laughs> If he had just gotten laid, he wouldn't have done that. Next. Uh, well, the thing that I learned immediately was um, Battlefront, you can now. It is confirmed. EA said you can play as an ATST. Was that up in the air? We've never played as an ATST. What do you mean? That's brand new. No, it's not. 
It's ATSTs in the first one. That you can play? The chicken walkers? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you you're right. You can get in any vehicle. You're right, because that's um, that sand people. That's what level. I was thinking of, too. But they're, they're on a few other levels, too. They're on Endor. Well, it's confirmed, because you couldn't get them in the second one. Is that that might be true. Because that's I what I was thinking about. why you'd be able to get into... Oh, yeah, because there's no... Wait. Why would you be able to get into an AT, AT but not an ATST? That's weird. I know. That's random. Uh, anyways, I guess that's good news. I'm more concerned about the number of planets and maps and characters and heroes. That's what I want to know about. There was something else. Let me find it here. I don't care about chicken walkers. If I can play as goddamn cities, if I can play as Jason Solo. What else do you find? I bet. Oh, love in there's no too. iron sights. It's a first person shooter with no iron sights. Is so it first you- only? Is it first or third? I don't, I'm not sure. So it says some rifles will have scopes, but there are no iron sights, producer says. I guess that kind of makes sense. They're all like futuristic space laser weapons. So how are you supposed to aim? Are you still going to have like a... a aim. That's not a word. With a uh, scope. Sorry. Yeah, he says some of them have scopes, but... have scopes. Well, I'm sure instead of an iron sight, it'll have something else that will work. Travis wants to party with Dexter from the diner. Recently, Rice <laughs> Rice has confirmed. Recently, Dice confirmed that there will be the game will ship with twelve multiplayer maps. So three on each planet so, kind of sounds like. That's what I'm thinking. We already saw Jakku. Was it Jakku? Jakku's the uh, DLC though. There are. Jeez. So there's four planets in the native, and then there's a DLC for Jakku, which is five planets. They're, I don't know, they're expected to sell nine to ten million copies in the first week. Is that a lot or something? <laughs> I'm gonna get it. We already knew that. <laughs> so there's one copy. <laughs> there's one more copy for you. Two, actually. Uh, we already knew that. That wasn't up for debate. It's just after Battlefront Two. I was thinking about it, especially today. So I told you. I texted you. I realized you could play uh, first person. I do remember that. I just remember hating it, so I just kept... I spent 10 years not knowing that existed. So I switched my profile in Battlefront 2 to first person. I changed my controls to match Battlefield almost exactly. And it feels like a whole new game. And I've been playing that, and I've been realizing how good of a game it is for fucking 2005. That's an amazing game. And I'm just worried that Battlefront... The new one is going to be, I don't know, just going to be subpar. Um, what I wanted to say about that, ep, ep, ep. so what I wanted to say about that is uh, episode, <laughs> guys, I am lost in my own mind right now. You are an old man. You don't even know what you were trying to say. Yeah, I had it before. Uh, it looks amazing. It sounds amazing. But when we hear the details about four mm. planets, two heroes, no space battles, little shit like that, it's like, really? What the fuck? What the hell is happening? Oh, if you're playing as first person, you can play first person as Jedi too? No. Hero, uh, the Jedi and Sith are third. Okay. I was going to say, because if we're playing the Mos Eisley Assault, I would never use first person because you can't see shit coming up from behind you. That's a good point. But if you're Jango and Boba Fett, it actually, it helps me a lot. Because if I'm Boba, I'm usually at least one level up from everyone on the roof or something and, like, sniping people. No, you would get fucked up. Because I, I'm going to come up behind you. It. I'm going to come up behind you with Ayla. You are, but the AI is not going to. True. Especially if I'm on the roof. Not gonna, they don't, the AI doesn't jump on the roof. Han. Like, done. Maybe. Lights I up just jet pack up. Right. Yeah, the AI is going to go all the way up. Do you know that's a fucking frustrating thing too, though? That's a great game, and the one flaw I think is the AI. If it's on normal, they don't do anything. Your teammates don't get any. They get six kills while you have like eighty. The enemy AI, AI doesn't do anything. 
That's what makes it so great because you can get 80. You just run around and annihilate. And if you try to bump up the difficulty, they kill you like in one shot, but they still don't fucking kill anyone else. You're, like you still look at the scoreboard at the end of the game and the AI, the top player of the AI has like six kills, which is ridiculous. Yeah, that, that should be more balanced. That's the really only thing. My only complaint about Battlefront 2. One and two, really. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like it because it kind of shows the importance of the heroes. So you have oh, yeah. one Ayla Shakira running around and all of a sudden 120 guys are dead. Yeah, if you have Ayla or Darth Maul, you're going to dominate. Or Grievous. That's true. Grievous is somewhat slow, though. If he's not sprinting, he's kind of like Vader. He just walks really slow. <laughs> just waltzes. Waltzing like a grandpa. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, sprint, choke, death, lightning. <laughs> I love playing as, you don't get as many kills, but I love playing as Sidious and Dooku. Because you just choke someone and lightning someone else, and it's it makes you feel like a badass. There is a uh, uh, cheat. Glitch. Yeah. Glitch, yeah. I do that all the time. I'll oh, yeah. choke someone, switch force powers, and lightning someone else while I'm choking a motherfucker. I do it all the time. That's why. That's what makes playing Sidious and Dooku fun, because you can do that. But you don't get as many kills. Don't like run around like Darth Maul or something. But you know still what? Fun as fuck. You know what's crazy to think about, and I wish they would have shown this. So in episode three, yeah, and it can go to the dark side. Spoiler! Yeah. Wait, who? <laughs> um, I wish they showed Anakin figuring out first lightning without Emperor showing him. As soon as he got his shit cut off, he was unable to use that because he's a cyborg now. So it would still make four, five, and six legit because Vader can't use it. But it would still just like show Anakin was the force. Like he just didn't he didn't even need to learn. Just his rage, like that's a good point. Yeah, I wish they they, they kind of spoilered that that lightning in episode three a little bit. He didn't even had to like use it at someone. Like he was just raging out somewhere, and there was lightning coming from his penile projectile. So that's a good point. I wish there was. Now it's always my issue with the originals is you don't. The way th the capability that they had back then, you don't get to see the full potential of the Jedi or the Sith, or yeah, or the Sith. Well, they We're do. We're probably gonna think the same thing in fifteen more years. Eh, maybe. 15, um, 20 but years. but you do get to see lightning from Sidious and Six. Well, yeah, which is sweet. But the thing of the fights, you can see choke. They're not awful, but compared to Episode Three fight, yeah, Anakin Obi Wan, I like, they someone look like. A badass warrior, like the the most badass warriors of their time, and they play that off. Luke, when you watch the fight with Luke and Vader in six, it's not terrible. But then when you read that like Luke's supposed to be amazing, you don't you don't see that, especially in the on the sail barge. He's swinging around like he f held a lightsaber for the first time. It looks like he's, he's fishing. swinging a baseball bat. It looks like he's fly fishing, like he, just yeah. swinging around, recastically. Then he sticks his hand up to just to get it. Look, a sky. Oh, ah. fuck. I used to live here. <laughs> Shit. You're going to die here, you know? Convenient. <laughs> what? Oh, man. Pickled Santa. That's how I feel. <laughs> hey. Tucker Callahan. What's up, my man? Thanks for joining the chat. Let's eat some ham. Kerner said, yeah. Kerner said you can use Force Lightning in the Episode 3 video game as Anakin. I never played that. What? Actually. I actually heard very good things about that. Oh, we can chat about that. So, May the 4th. They had uh, Force Unleashed on sale on the Xbox Live store for six bucks. And the DLC tell me were two fifty each. What are you doing? Why don't you tell me this? Why don't you get on your Xbox? I worked. Well, I worked and then I played it. I would have come Unleashed. I would have come home real quick and download down, at least click download. I mean you can still buy the game for six bucks anywhere. I downloaded, uh, downloaded Assassin's Creed Black Flag for free. For free, yeah. That I, that's the last one. click I, I downloaded it. So it I haven't even it hasn't even downloaded. I just said yes, buy for free purchase and then shut my Xbox <laughs> off. <laughs> um and I have I played the first the very first level of Force Unleashed. Have you played Force Unleashed, by the way? Uh I played a couple I didn't play all the way through, no. The first thing is Vader 
It's like a little pre preview, whatever. And then you have a training level. And then you have like the actual first level. So I've done those three things. I haven't gone past that. I ran out of time, but it's fun, man. It's fun. It's like Jedi Assassin's Creed kind of. So that's good. Can I have what mod? Tucker, can you have mod for what? Mod? What are you talking about, dude? Moderation. Mod? Well, wanna... I, don't, I don't know who you are, but what? Mod <laughs> for what? We're not selling mods. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't. You don't want to sell us death sticks, motherfucker. Imperials. Anyways, uh, it's a good game. I'm excited to get more into it. It's fun. I'm trying to think. It came out what 2008. Uh, so before seven years that. Old. It was before that, I think, because I was at Ohio Northern. I want to say it came out in 07. For the it's stream? Old, man. No, you cannot. I don't... Wait, I don't know what you're talking about. Be a moderator on the... Oh, wow. Well, you got to contribute a little bit first. Do you even like Star Wars, buddy? <laughs> what is going on? Um, yeah, I, I think it came out in like 2007, I want to say. Um, it's a good game for back then, man. It's actually really... It's fun. It's just too short. The I like the plot of vader having you know an unknown motherfucker yeah yeah well that's why i was excited to download the dlc too because there's three mission there's a mission on the jedi temple on coruscant on tatooine and on hoth fall of 07 as dls dls sue dl sue who's sue dlc sue so i was excited to get those and we'll see a female sue yeah i was trying to stream some goddamn battlefront and kotor but wasn't happening. That shit wasn't happening. Yeah. Probably going to play KOTOR anyways. I don't know. I want to play Dark Souls, but I'm not in a fantasy mood right now. So I can't bring myself to do it. I'm all sci-fi. Like, all I want to do is read Star Wars books and play Star Wars and all the rest of it. I might have to just hold off on the Star Wars books for a minute. We Well, we need to get that? ready for... Yeah, that's what, what was the, uh, the four-month engagement? Yeah, let's, do, let's, 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 let's get into that shit. So, uh, Star Wars Official posted uh, kind of like a timeline of everything that the fans want to brush up on before Episode 7 comes out. I don't know if this is true, but it seems like this is all the stuff that is now 100% canon from Disney. So, basically, starting in June, they have books, movies, games, etc. to read through, play through, watch, uh, leading up to Episode 7. So, here we go. Starting in June... Episode 1, Episode 2, The Clone Wars Movie. I don't know why they only put three things in June. Because that would take a day to do those. If you're a true fan. True. <laughs> I, I like your comment. <laughs> so much insight. Um, and then July, Seasons 1 through 4 of The Clone Wars TV show. Uh, I've watched all The Clone Wars, but I didn't really focus. I kind of had it on the background. So I feel like I need to watch it again. Kind of. There's a lot of info in there, though. There's not. There is. So it's cartoon, dude. There's I know, not a lot but no, info. there is actually. Um, they talk about a lot of stuff. Like Tarkin's stuff with in it. Woohoo. Dooku, Maul, uh, Asajj. Yeah. There's some stuff about Sifo-Dyas and the ordering of the clone army. There's a lot in there. Yeah, so. they're all dead. I'm going to watch that again. So season one through four of Clone Wars in July. August, season five and six of the Clone Wars Dark Disciple novel. I don't know what that one is. September, episode three, novels, Lord of the Sith, Tarkin, and A New Dawn. And I have not heard of any of those. Ooh, Tarkin's a book. Well, I've heard of Tarkin, but I haven't heard of Lord of the Sith or A New Dawn. I'm not sure what those are. Just says Lord of the Sith. Lord of the Sith. It's about Sidious well, or something. They have three novels in one month. I can't read that fast. October is uh, episode one of Rebels. Rebels, sorry. <laughs> uh, a New Hope. And Heir to the Jedi novel. And November is episode five and six. Battlefront novel, Star Wars Battlefront game, and Aftermath novel. And that leads us up to episode seven. You know what? Maybe some of these books are the... They're releasing a uh, a three-book set leading up to Force Awakens. So maybe that's what some of those books are that we didn't recognize. Hmm. They haven't been out yet, so I'm excited. There's a lot of stuff books. coming up that we... Yeah, <clears throat> so is this just like in preparation for episode seven? Yeah. And understanding like, what's technically canon. From- they didn't say anything about official canon, but that's what it's looking like. Like they've kept canon and put new stuff in from episode one through episode six. 
That's kind of what it seems like. They didn't really say that, though. It just says episode seven, uh, ultimate fan countdown challenge. So starting in June, 23 days, we got to brush up on all this motherfucking shit. Oh, uh, brush Stupid Star Wars. I got to watch all of it again. Uh, I love it. Uh, I'm excited, though, actually. I haven't read a Star Wars book in a while, so that, that would be good. I still am stuck on uh, whatchamacallit. I read, I read quick once I can get into a book. And like I said a few episodes ago, I bought, well, you can see, well, they can't see, but I got a whole collection of motherfucking motherfuckers over there. Um, wow, there's a bunch of motherfuckers. Once I get into a book, I can read really quick. Like I read the first Game of Thrones book in like two weeks probably, and it's a huge book. Um, but nothing really grabbed me. I got Revan, Deceived, from the Old Republic. I got the Plagueis book. I got a, a Dooku book bunch of other stuff and uh i didn't really just latch onto it so i gotta try again you started all of them i read like the first chapter of all of them yeah i just didn't grab me like from some, some things <clears throat> grab me like all of a sudden it's just like from my understanding i've heard grievous or grievous uh plagueis is the best out of all of them and you've heard my rants about the revan book but i also need to read uh the second and third darth bane books yeah i mean they're definitely read worthy but the first one, I believe, is the best. And there was uh, Bounty Hunter Wars. I read those either. Yeah. Really? I got. I literally got 50 pages away from finishing the first one and just set it down and never picked it up. It just didn't. That's how much. How, that's how much it kept my attention. It's unfortunate. I don't like that. So, anyways, um, but yeah. So that's the countdown challenge. We're gonna try to implement part of that if we can. I think we should definitely watch Clone Wars again. I'm, I didn't even get all the way through there because I, I don't think I watched episode or season six. If we could try to watch like, it's not out of the question. They're short episodes. If we could watch like eight a week or something, six or eight a week and chat about them. I think that'd be good. Or the good of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be good and uh, it would help us to brush up on our expanded, not expanded universe, our... Uh, Canon knowledge. <clears throat> Travis says Darth Zana, which it's actually so even in Plagueis, uh, Bane and Zana are brought up quite up, not too often, but they're they're brought up. Um, and it's interesting because Bane is the one you think of. Like Bane was like the start of everything. But in the Plagueis book, Zana's brought up like just along with him, like these two were the sp- the f- beginners of the rule of two. Yeah. So there's a lot of credit that's given to Zana that I don't I don't think she earned. Uh, rule of two. <laughs> rule of more than one, but less than three. Rule of a couple. Rule of <laughs> square root. <laughs> so the rest the rest to past. The last of what uh we got written down here is it's a versus and I think it's pretty simple. But we're gonna we're gonna debate this real quick. Um, I want to hear some thoughts. Anyways, I've talked about I I'm on a few like Star Wars fan pages on Facebook or whatever the rest of it is. Someone uh, said, "I know it's not Star Wars, but what about Gandalf versus Yoda?" And a lot of people, without even thinking about it, said Yoda. And I was on there with one other person trying to justify a case for Gandalf because a lot of people don't realize the wizards in Lord of the Rings are not just people with magic powers; they're gods. In a human form, sent to help, they're like kind of descended to Middle Earth to help people do shit. Arguably, if Yoda ascended to Middle Earth, he would be considered a god too. That is, what are you talking about? That has nothing to do with the argument. It's just Yoda versus Gandalf. Why is Gandalf considered a god? Because he is a god. No, because he's standing next to orcs and don't know any better. So this guy has special powers. He's a god. No, I'm telling you, this Gandalf, little green bitch. No, 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 no. Uh, Gandalf is a god in the Lord of the Rings universe. Yeah, Yoda is not a god because he's in the Star Wars universe, and there's many gods. They're called Jedi and Sith. No, they're not gods. He's just a Jedi. I'm just arguing that it could they could be on equal levels as far as the god title because they're in different universes. Travis, yes, I do know who Zana is. Shut up. Zana. Tell me about Gandalf. Zana. <laughs> yes, I know who Zana is. Zana? Zana. Well, it looks like Hannah with a Z, so it looks like Zana. It's an actual celestial being. 
What is celestial? So Yoda's a celestial being too. Yoda is a dude with force powers and he's a badass. He Gandalf also, is a god in a human form. Right, but also Yoda can't die. His physical form can die and then he's yeah, just but, a ghost that can talk well, to Well, then people. he becomes a celestial being. That can just talk to people, not like he can actually do anything with mm, it. Ajunta Paul did. But Yoda didn't. He just talks he could. to people. He just we, talks to Luke. He just says, hey, here I am. He asked me advice and shit. Mm, I don't know. Go with Yoda. I did what? I did what? I don't know. He's <laughs> like well, an angel or something was, from the heavens? A god. Well, if Yoda came down with a starship, but he, he would be something ascended from the heavens and would be considered a god. That makes no sense. <laughs> I'm just saying, if Yoda showed up in the Lord of the Rings I'm not talking about Yoda showing up in Lord of the Rings universe. He would be considered a god, the same as... I'm talking about Yoda and his power versus Gandalf and his power. So what are they doing? I'm not talking about Yoda landing on the Shire with a fucking are they, are space, we, spaceship. That doesn't so make any sense. What is, I'm just what talking is, about Yoda versus Gandalf. It, it makes a difference, though. Not really. I'm not talking about fucking then what's your, then your argument? Star Destroyers on ho- fucking Well, then the argument Moria. that... That he's a god doesn't it doesn't matter at all because the powers whether he's a god or not are the exact same. They're not. That's the point. Yoda is a Jedi. Gandalf is not just a wizard. He's a god. He is an actual god. Gandalf is his human form. As right. As opposed to so his, is Gandalf, whatever his other form is. The is the god's name Gandalf? No. So we're talking about the the physical being that can be killed. So he's Gandalf technically isn't a god. But yeah, but if. Gandalf, if his physical body dies, he's still alive. He just in a, Gandalf in a isn't form. the god is. But yeah, right. Same as Sauron. So yeah, Yoda Until would destroy they... Gandalf, the celestial body being. I don't know whatever you want to talk about. I don't know, man. Gandalf battled that Balrog and Moria for what is it? Three days straight. And that was a, a demon god too. And he won. It's a fucking badass. Yoda wouldn't die. I feel like if Yoda got <laughs> if Yoda got in close enough to actually hit him with the lightsaber, then yeah, that would actually hurt his physical form. But I mean, he can Gandalf can deflect some shit. He can hit some barriers and he can push back some like spells and energy and shit of his own. Like if Yoda tried to push <clears throat> him, Gandalf could like block it. I feel like Yoda would do the exact same thing. And there's not a lot that Gandalf would do. To harm Yoda. Yoda just has a lightsaber. Gandalf. I mean... He doesn't have... they. Not, both of them don't really have attack force powers or powers in general. That's a good point. So we get down to the... Like we, we break it down. sage people instead of like warriors. You know what I mean? So we break it down to Yoda has a lightsaber. And Gandalf isn't very mobile. Mm, so yeah. It's a decent point. They're kind of... They're very similar... Mentally, they're they're both supposed to be the the wiser know it alls, but they don't. They're not supposed to be very active and mobile, but they can be if they're forced into it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But both of them don't really have attack force powers or powers. Um, but Yoda just has the light. Well, there. they do. They just don't really use them that much. That we see. I mean, Gandalf can basically kind of do whatever the fuck he wants. Y- Yoda, he always keeps a lightsaber or a uh, welcome. Condom. <laughs> he, always, he always has them motherfuckers. I feel like if Yoda was swinging at Gandalf with the lightsaber, Gandalf, well, he could put like some barrier around him and just completely block it. Just be like, sorry. And then just like. Yoda's going to slip inside of Gandalf's pocket and stab him right in the fucking <laughs> thigh. He's Yoda so small. Yoda Gremlins 3. Gremlins 3. Collect his item. It's a good debate. I mean, I don't know. I need to read more. The, I think the issue is because not neither of them have their powers. Kind of negate each other. There's okay. You can push me. I can push you. All right. Next. Let's sit and meditate about the future of our world. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's just shake hands and sit here and fight the demons together. So I guess the main answer to Yoda versus Gandalf is they would decide to not fight each other and just meditate about the future of the world. But Yoda would talk shit. He'd be like, "Well, remember that time? <laughs> remember that time I almost whooped your ass?" But instead, you bought me some green tea. I like that shit. <laughs> you got that peyote still? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's do that. Smoking in the fucking fireworks. Gandalf, you crazy bitch. I th- I'm pretty sure Yoda becomes a thug in uh, Lord of the Rings universe. So. 
I like how we started the argument and you were like, well, if Yoda landed a star cruiser on Middle no, Earth, I'm just saying, God. <clears throat> no, think about it. Because you were labeling, okay, Gandalf is a god in the Lord of the Rings universe. Take him out of the Lord of the Rings universe, put him in Star Wars universe. Okay, you could still label him as a god, but what I think the identity of a god changes because Sidious could be a god. He doesn't die. Even when he dies, he doesn't die. It's stupid. But and he, and he, there's that there's that thought transfer. Well, you don't know that. It's part of the third book of But I Bane, mean, yeah, but. I guess you know, that's what, that's what my argument. So the, the really label like, of God and label of Jedi Master are so wishy washy between the two full universes. Yeah, that, that I don't know. I don't know. That's what I was saying. If Yoda lands his fucking X Wing on. Travis said, in Yoda's universe, he's a Jedi. In Gandalf's universe, he's a god. Right. So neither of them matter because they're all, they're both in different universes. That's what I'm, but in the Star Wars universe, Yoda is not a god. He's just a Jedi. Right. So in Star Wars universe, there isn't a god. There might well, there might be. Is there? I don't know. I don't live there. I was. On Jakku. I vacationed there. Jakku. It was gorgeous. The beaches of Normandy. <laughs> uh, I I th- I think I think Gandalf would win. Even if Yoda happened to beat Gandalf, the old man body would die, and he would just be up there and just be like, "Well, I'm gonna just take over." But I'm it's just not gonna- Gandalf anymore. But it's. It's the same thing as Sauron. Like, Sauron got defeated when they cut the ring off of his finger, but he didn't actually die. Like, his body died, but he didn't die yet until the ring was destroyed. He still lived for 2,000 more years until they destroyed the ring. But is, okay, back to it. Gandalf is the physical being, not the gods, someone else. It's No, it's not someone else. It's the same person in a different form. Well, it's not a person. Well, it's the same being in a different form. So, as opposed to a guy, so a if, human, or whatever. If and or why? If and how, now brown cow. Yoda cuts down Gandalf, kills him dead, cuts him in half. Mm-hmm. He'll just come back because he's a god. Yeah. Then, yeah, if you can't die, then why is this? A well, versus? he might be able to die. Like Sauron was able to be killed because he tied his life force to the ring, and once the ring was gone, he's gone. So if Gandalf tied his force to but Gandalf, see, I, see, that's where I don't know about too <laughs> much a, of that lore. Because if he didn't, you didn't come to this I, battle prepared. It's kind of like I'm gonna pull out some shit, but it's kind of like Voldemort. Like he's really, really strong. If he hadn't, like he tied himself to those Horcruxes, thing, yeah. And then if you destroyed those, you kind of destroyed him. If he hadn't done that, it would be a different story. It'd be like a totally different turn of events whole little fun events events <laughs> all yeah. right anyways so, uh, i vote for gandalf but motherfucker well yeah i guess i have to too if he can't you don't die. have to you can vote for whoever you want he can't die well i mean like you said yoda doesn't he he becomes a force ghost but can he actually do stuff or he just talks to luke and tells him what to do ajuna paul did stuff that's kotor though it's not canon anymore <laughs> Yoda's not canon. He, he's actually blue. Yoda's not even, Gandalf's not canon. He's shit. blue. Like green tea. <laughs> oh, balls. Good gravy. What, what else is on your list, you motherfucker? That's it. That's it. I said it twice just in case. <laughs> That's all we got. I forget something else I want to talk about. I want to talk about Godzilla, but you motherfucker didn't want to sit there and watch it. You want to you watch? You didn't even mention it to me. You, you want to watch? Today, he's like, you watch Godzilla? No, I never told you. What the we fuck? talked about it last time. You said it's on HBO. I was like, oh, I gotta watch that. You should watch it. And you're like, I don't want. I want to. I want to. I want Good Godzilla. Day one. Well, I did watch yeah. Avengers and Dark Knight. I haven't been out to the. I haven't been out to the theaters. Go and see you, And you've seen the other ones. I've already seen the other ones. The other ones what? X Men and the Dark Knight. Yeah, and that's why I watched them. They were good. <laughs> they were ridiculous. Um, I, actually, X Men was made in two thousand. The, f- the first one. So there's some there's some cheesy things, you know. You I'm go trying back to think and watch of, it. I'm trying to think of the beginning of that. It's they're going. The beginning Mut- shows the mutant the orange origin stories. The orange stories. The orange the orange agent orange stories about all of them. Uh, not like full stories, but kind of like a little brief intro of each mutant. 
Don't do that. That sounds terrible. <laughs> you look like you're dead. Look like your corpse. Do it again. What? <laughs> <laughs> ah, they so. show like a little intro of all the mutants and then rogue is the last one she's you see and then she like runs away to alaska and meets wolverine and stuff that motherfucker and he's, and and he's doing no there. cage fights up in that cage remember that he was a he re- <clears throat> he's kind of cheating he was using his shit <laughs> <laughs> he was he can't die. It's like you hit me. I'm just gonna heal oh, myself. Oh, you broke my jaw. You. Healed my jaw. What are you gonna break next? <laughs> I'm just gonna heal that shit again. Hey, that's how that's Yoda's gonna win because he can just heal himself. My best is my favorite because Wolverine can heal himself and Yoda. Yoda's gonna win that one because he can heal himself. <laughs> All right, Gandalf um, can't heal himself. Gandalf doesn't even have those adamantium. Claws, but he's a god, so, so he can create the ability to heal and then heal himself. <laughs> yeah, basically, if you really wanted to. So Jimmy Hendrix versus Gandalf. <laughs> uh, Jimmy H- Hendrix. Hendrix. <laughs> um, no, it's X Men's good. It's you know it's you got to take it with a grain of salt. It was the first. It's two thousand. It's one of the first superhero movies. So of the of the newer superhero movies. So, um, yeah, it was good from when it was made. Some of the CG is weird. Like Toad is kind of silly. All the thing, which is Darth Maul, by the way. That's where I've seen him. No, uh, Darth Revan. <laughs> Malik. Wait, Toad is not Darth Maul. Ray Ray Park, right? Yeah. No, I isn't. Uh, what's his face? Who's uh, playing Kylo Ren? I thought he played a mutant. What? No, he's young. I thought he played a mutant. He's a young motherfucker. <laughs> he's one of them young and one of them young motherfucker bitches. Uh, what's Ray his name? Bitch. R- Romano. Oh, X Men. Ray Park. So yeah, he's Darth Maul and he's Toad. Um, it's you know, so just little things like him grabbing people with his tongue and flinging them to and fro is just you know kind of weird looking. But uh, in general, it's pretty good. Can't complain. Uh, X Men. I remember X Men Two being one of my favorite superhero movies. That's the one where Wolverine learns a little bit more about his backstory, and they go to that like secret base where they're experimenting on mutants and stuff in the fucking I don't know if it's in Canada or Alaska or something do you remember what I'm talking about have you seen that one Are you, you haven't seen X-Men 2 what's it or called or it's just ben, X-Men, X-Men 2 X-Men United I think I've seen it once oh okay that's that's really good third one's kind of weak but I've seen the third one many times because I like the last battle so yeah the, all the, the last battle is fucking awesome Phoenix is just ridiculous and I and in uh Audio sounded great the whole time. Thank you, Connor. Why are you leaving? What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. All right. Ass hat. Travis, you want to be our intern? All right. <laughs> You're hired. What did you say? You didn't want to? You're hired again. So, yeah, I've, I've watched the third X Men more often because I do like the backstory. And they start going back like how they met Jean Grey. I wish they did more because in the first two, especially in the first one, you see Jean Grey like. She doesn't even know what she's like. Very timid about using her power. She's like doesn't even doesn't even <laughs> fuck X three <kinda>, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't even kind of want to use it. She's like very scared and she, I mean yeah, just seems like she's weak. I don't. But, obvi- but at least if you knew the comics, then you know who she is. But I didn't, and I didn't realize in three she's all of a sudden gonna be fucking Darth Vader. <laughs> Kylo Ren spoiler. Destroying everything. <laughs> Phoenix is Kylo Ren. So I wish I had a little more of that backstory, but uh, no, it's good. I didn't dislike good, X3 man. as much as people always say, but... I mean, I don't hate it, but I didn't read the comics, so I don't know if they fucked the story up like everyone says. So. Well, it's across the board. Movies are going to fuck up the the original stuff. Yeah. Um, I have not seen the two new ones, have you? X, uh, First Class I and have, Days of Future Past? I've, I have seen First Class. Not seen because it has um, what's her face, Jennifer Lawrence. That is, I thought just Days of Future Past was with her. Maybe I've seen that one or both. Mystique, I don't know. I haven't seen the two new ones yet, so I've I don't think I've seen all of them, all of it. But Xavier I, I, put up mental blocks for her as a child because he was scared she was too powerful. Yeah, I got that much. 
I just want to know a little more on why she's so powerful and what her power is. Why is she the only f- class five? Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's got to happen. This is my same complaint with the Matrix, too. Obviously, hands down, it's it's great. There's really no complaints, but I just want to know the nitty gritty of everything. Just because just cause how I am. And I want to, like, know why Neo is the one, why they do all this shit, and why Phoenix is a badass. That's just me. Doesn't really take away from the storyline, so that's just what my brain says. It's the only thing it says. It's the only thing it says. Really, the only thing it says. What? <laughs> Details. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke show alert with who? Kerner. Jennifer Lawrence. I mentioned her name. <laughs> showdown. <laughs> showdown. Smoke show showdown. Cash in that showdown. <laughs> Cashing in, Jennifer. Yes, thank you, Kerner. <laughs> yeah, she's an attractive woman. Oh, man. Um, Scarlett Johansson, though, so nothing really else matters. <laughs> Scarlet Witch. You haven't even seen Avengers. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should, so we can talk about that next week. Next next episode. That'd it's in the good. plans. I planned it all. Uh, that, that would be great, actually. J-Law. I've never heard that nickname before. Really? J-Law? No. This is like J-Lo. A little different. She's very handsome. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. <laughs> All right. Guys, the fucking podcast is over. I know. We're done. Go it's a away. Short episode. Shut up and go home. Play some Battlefront. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to you for listening. And that's all. Go away. I don't care. Had enough of it, too. So we, we did uh, Columbus's um, um, regular tasting um, beer. Um, 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 Columbus Brewing Company's beer we did we did that it was it was it was good paul go see altron okay we'll talk about that next time uh yeah beer of choice this week was bad choice Summer teeth by columbus brewing company uh it wasn't d- disgusting but it was a decent beer it but it was like a normal lager yeah. so yep, one yep. star nothing fancy one star agreed um thanks for our sponsors new wave traders all your retro everything uh, NewWaveTraders.com and Podcast Masters, Podcast Editing, VoiceOver Editing, all the rest of that shit. PodcastMasters.net. Thanks to them. Thanks to everyone that was hanging out with us in the Twitch chat room. We appreciate you. Uh, if you're listening to this after the fact, you were not live with us, uh, check it out Thursday nights, most Thursday nights. Some weeks we have a different schedule, but usually Thursday nights. Uh, you can jump on Twitch. Just add us right now. Yeah. Twitch.tv, Rogue Squad Pod. Um, follow us. Watch the live show. Chat with us. Tell us what we want to talk about. And uh, we'll mention your name on the air. Be awesome. Uh, if you haven't checked out the website yet, make sure you do that. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. All the rest of that shit. And laugh. If you're like a Star Wars fan, follow us on Instagram. We have funny stuff that you want to see and laugh at and love and cherish. Take home to your mama. Take home to your mama. Um, count down the days to episode seven, guys. Condam the days? Yeah, that's all we got. That's all we got to say. We're gonna have condams. The School days. Responsibility. So all we got to. That's all we got to do right now. Sag we do away. have. We have uh, that that month by month set up. We're gonna try to stay true to that and uh, let you guys know how we are doing along the way. Getting ready for episode seven. Yeah. Absolutely. So excited. Stay tuned. We excited. You excited. They're all excited. Um, yeah, our, our stream went pretty well tonight. Like the quality and everything and the video and yeah. stuff. I'm actually pretty happy. Good. So, yeah, it's reliable now. We got a PC for streaming. So, fucking tune into that shit and make it worth it. Buy our shirts. Rogue Squadron Podcast. slash <laughs> merch. Right. And we love you. And we'll talk to you some other time. Uh, yell at us on Instagram and Twitter. We want to hear from you. Okay, bye. Shut up! <laughs>